So welcome to uh, Forever Fit and Fabulous. This show is a platform that features people that not only fit in body, but mind, body, and spirit. And since you are the founder of Living Labs Federation, and what I liked about your interview, I read one of your interviews, is about changing the planet. So I would like for you to share uh, who you are. Um, this is your platform and enlighten us and teach us on how to better ourselves. <laughs> is that <laughs> yes. So take it away. Yeah. So, um, so Jan, uh, Jan Lemuel, I grew up in, uh, in Monaco, uh, Monte Carlo. Uh, I'm uh, 46 now. So uh, I spent, uh, yeah, 18 years uh, over there. Uh, dad, engineer in oil and gas, uh, mother, teacher. So uh, my dad was extreme sport. Uh, guy, so I uh, I've been doing sport all my life and uh, studying very hard because my mother was a teacher. So no, no right. way out, no way out. Right. Um, two brothers, uh, one a doctor, one another teacher actually, and um, so yeah, my my life was uh, based on sport. I, I went, I wanted to be a, a professional athlete actually, and uh, I had to stop uh, in this career for uh, a different reason. I was a paraglider. Para uh, uh -huh. competitor and uh, I ended up stopping uh, due to an accident uh, so then I had to come back to the initial path my, my dad uh, I would say traced for me which was engineer I had to be an engineer was the way and uh, so that's how I went to corporate for years and years but still doing all my uh, paragliding free riding uh, windsurfing sailing uh, in parallel traveling around the world and uh, uh, corporate for 20 years in aerospace, oil and gas, aluminum. Wow. Uh, and that's how I arrived in Singapore in uh, 2015, actually. Um, and uh, that's when I decided, uh, I, I already was working on to changing my life and, and be more on to, uh, I would say, uh, meaningful impact. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, seeing uh, seeing everything we're doing bad for the planet i would say and uh, all the animals and the scuba diver I, I love scuba diving um and uh so I, i've been working on this and it's been a journey over the last five years since i'm in singapore until i decided to completely quit the world of corporate and uh dedicate right. my life to uh on, on that field actually and i created the living labs so uh, what what triggered it? I mean, something must have like a light bulb must have gone, you know, off for you to decide. I mean, you've been in corporate for such a long time and something that you saw, something that you experienced or something that you read that changed it, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So it, it was, uh, I always grew actually uh, since I was a kid in the, in the idea where it was kind of too late. We already spoiled the planet and the best thing right. for the planet, the animals was for us to disappear as fast as we could. That, that's how I grew up and, and read this and I was in this environment. I don't have any kids for part of that is, is the reason. Uh, that was for me, it was, so I was always doing those natural sports and spending time with animals and everything. And it was, it was the way I was saying. But still, uh, I'm a fighter and I, I, I wanted to fight. And I think what happened is uh, gradually in the corporate world, I was trying always to have a different approach, more social, more environmental and everything. And I think I was always waiting, you know, for this next year, I will have more power. I will have a different position and I'll be able to do what I couldn't do so far. Right. And let's wait for next year. And it's kind of the hamster wheel in, 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 in that sense. And, and, and you're always waiting to, to get more to the point where I realized, well, there's no, I, I I think I went on to a tipping point where the higher I was going, the less liberty I had to do things differently uh, wow. in corporate. Kind of the, the problem with the big corporation where you have a big alignment. And then I was like, okay, I got to do it different. And, and, uh, and actually there was like, I would say three things that triggered that. It was, you know, sometimes you think about what are the different turns that make you, make, make me, make you um, take a different direction. Um, the first thing when, as, as an angel investor, I'm working with uh, startups. Uh, I did that in parallel of my corporate life. And uh, one, I love the fact that on the, on the small entities, everything goes fast and you try and you, and it's different, totally way of doing things. 
Second, I, I met the millennials generation, I call them, which mm -hmm. uh, like everything that's, uh, I would say, everybody that's uh, at least 15, 15, 20 years younger than me. And I really love the way they're thinking. And I kind of find myself in them, like always being the outcast and, and thinking different to the generation you're in and trying to say, no, that's not the right way to do it. We have to do it differently. And very passionate about everything that, that's how I am. And, uh, and I went from the, the situation where I was like, well, I still have uh, uh, some years to leave and giving the sports I'm doing, uh, it's not that much uh, statistically. <laughs> Other activities, I would say. <laughs> Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I, I was like, well, those kids, they really need, I mean, they really deserve uh, uh, for me to try to help them and push them and try to achieve why I could not actually, and I took uh, this one professional path. So that's the, 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 so the first one is the size that to, be, to be able to work on leave, uh, smaller things, mm -hmm. uh, walk away from the big power and the big, the big money and everything. And, and second, this generation. And the third one was, when I, 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 I was working with a friend uh, uh, who was an NGO in Brazil and working with the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And that's when I, I started meeting all those people trying to save the planet, like me actually, but with different means, without all the tools I could have in corporate. For me, uh, I, used, I, I usually say the word is a village uh, when I was a corporate. I mean, whatever I needed, expertise, money, whatever, you give a phone call, people being in uh, Chile or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. you'll reach them. Uh, for those people, it's much more difficult. And I, I thought they were trying to achieve the same thing without much means. So I said, well, I, I like to help them. Uh, so that was the trigger. And the way I, I thought I would do this was in fact to say, well, actually, uh, I, have, I, I have the chance to have this network uh, because of my crazy life, because of my travels and everything. And how can I, I try to federate those people? And, in, and, and, and the final flip, when I decided to quit was, well, first, instead of trying to convert all those huge companies and huge organizations to be compatible with a better world so from a sustainability climate change standpoint, uh, standpoint, why don't I help the startups, the new companies to be created? Why don't I focus on startups? That's one. And on the people side and where I was a bit more selfish, it's also instead of trying to always convince people to see like you, well, there are like so many people actually that's see like me already so let's try to federate mm. them and that's that's the decision so that's the really living labs federation uh, to right. go down and uh and, and try to help them uh uh with what i know uh as as an investors and uh i'll, I'll describe that later more precisely sure. right so so it's it's incredible because you're talking about millennials which we most of us have a different perception of what millennials are and yours is more positive like as, as like time passes by, especially with this uh, situation that we are in, the COVID situation, uh, I'm beginning to learn more about the millennials in positive light than anything else. Because we've always considered, we, we all are, I come from a generation that we work very, very hard, right? Millennials are the ones that are calling out for more balance in life. And then my kids are the ones that do not want to be in debt. They buy things that they need. They do not want, they buy things, uh, recycle, sustainability, uh, clothing, you know. So it's a totally different, they don't want to have credit cards. You know, they, they live simpler than, I guess, my generation. I think uh, that's what I think. So, so now my perception of millennials are, are very different. It's more towards positiveness than anything else. But millennials are also now in a situation where they can be part of a solution in this situation uh, because this is a crisis that they have uh, encountered for the first time in their life, right? And they have better ideas. And, and exactly. And I think, and you said it, I think ours, the codes were more to work hard Mm -hmm. And I, the way I see it, they're more into achieve. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's passion. We want to do it. We don't need to own anything. We, we don't need to, we just want to be, yeah, to achieve something. And, and that's, what I, that's, that's what I, I, I really like with them. Right. Um, and, and sometimes it's kind of drives me crazy in the way they are, you know, they, 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 yeah, everything is about uh, uh, patient and it goes very fast. So I, I'm, 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 I'm a guy that goes pretty fast, but in the way they can switch things or drop it off if they don't believe in it and, and, and go to something else. 
Uh, so it needs, it needs an adjustment at the beginning, but in fact, I like it because it's just try and error. Let's try this. Doesn't work. Okay, let's change. Let's do another thing. And in the situation where we're in, well, I think that's the be the best approach. Wow, I did. Yeah, you're right. I think um, a friend of mine uh, said that COVID. Uh, the positive part about COVID is that you you can't uh, you learn that failure is part of life. You know, it's not even failure if it doesn't work. Just move, and you have to be agile and adjust and and you know drop it off if it doesn't work. Don't waste so much time in it. I think yeah. that's the same mentality that you're saying. Exactly, and they're not expecting anything from the prior generations in the way where they, they, they take control and, and they choose what they want from the previous generation. Uh, uh, I grew up, uh, when I, and, and, and I think of parents too, you know, all those big topics about sustainability, the world, politics, it's not your stuff, right? It's our stuff. We take care of it. There's a clear separation and, uh, well, the big guys will take care of it. And what I like in this new generation, they're like, well, since you've been proven for the last 40 years, it doesn't work right, very well, right? So right. we're going to take it. <laughs> we're going right. to try it and we're going to do it. And, right. and, 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 and I really like this. And uh, I, I came up looking at uh, investing to the uh, kind of a theorem that says what I like about small and local actions is that you can try. Uh, uh, there's not that much money involved and, and, and the consequences of your failure is nothing compared to the possibilities you open when you succeed. Whereas mm. from where I was, every little project was with a million dollars and you think twice before starting. And if you fail, consequences can be terrible. And so there's a limitation there, right? right. So uh, what they think is, is they were 7 billion. And, and let's go and try, try, try. You lost me? Can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Do you hear me too? Perfect, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's approach. That's so when I decided basically to go at the bottom of the pyramid uh, from an uh, uh, economic uh, and, and corporate standpoint, uh, that's what I found out. I, 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 I Actually, we have to leverage the power of number. and. Uh, and when you look at it, it's not that much, actually. You don't need one hundred percent of people to be active. There will be always those people that have this life and they don't feel comfortable taking action or whatever. Never mind. I mean, with five, ten percent of the people doing their own thing, well, you can change the world, <laughs> really. Yeah. And then that's really the spirit that drives and that really seriously. So let's talk about this um, uh, Living Labs Federation. What 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 does it involve? Uh, enlighten us. Exactly. So uh, um, the, the, the idea was to put together all the BRICS solution, which is a startup, millennials, those NGOs and everything. And so I tried to look at being an angel investor in startups. What, uh, this is what I know how to do. How can I help all those new startups that try to bring really concrete solutions to tackle plastic problems, to tackle how do you protect a forest, to tackle there's a, how do you reproduce coral to build back the coral reef. You have a lot of those startups all around the world that don't talk, uh, that, that, that working on this actually, and they don't have access to all the expertise they need. And, and my reflection was to say, well, there's an unfair game actually for those startups, whereas they're not only companies like the others that just designed to make big profit, you know, and they go into this big competition and to venture capital and acceleration and where it's a big game and a big race where we try to find who's going to be the next uh, unicorn, right? And mm -hmm. the problem is that that's the only ecosystem there is for them, whereas their mission is not the same. Their mission is to accomplish something and to have impact on the planet. And why don't, why do we, why do we make them go through this super selective competition where only one or two wins at the end? Whereas mm -hmm. even if there are 50 of the, on the starting lines, well, they all deserve the 50 to achieve because they are on impact, right? We, we're not only trying to find only one and, and make it, uh, if we only find one, we'll never change anything. We need the 50 to achieve. And uh, looking at all this, that's why I say, well, I, I like to, to have a much more longer view as impact investor. How can we make a longer process, which is more uh, uh, a training for them to, to, to ensure that we, we make them succeed 
and we don't expect the same return and profit because they have other ways of doing impact. Uh, uh, instead of just making it like a hard selection and, uh, and, and you give them money and let, let the best win. And uh, so the Living Labs were, was first uh, is in the methodology, it's a long-term investment, uh, long-term process from early stage to uh, what we call Series A when they're like a uh, multi-million dollar. Uh, uh, and second, it's, it's a way to put all those actors of change together. So instead of just saying, okay, there's this innovation, this startup, this is what they're doing, this is what they try to achieve. I take one step back and I sit down with those NGOs, those people in, uh, in, in mm -hmm. the jungle, or even governmental organization. I try to work with the Singapore government here to mm -hmm. see what do you try to achieve and uh, what is the priorities you have as a topic, the problems you want to tackle here. And, uh, and then we look for the startups that could bring an element of solution. And when we have those startups, well, they might not have a business model. They might lacking expertise. Then we build this three to four years plan to see what can we bring to them? What expertise can we bring? Now the world, I mean, everybody's connected. Uh, uh, I found startups in, in Ghana that are lacking uh, expertise in business development for banking system. They're in the bank system, in the example mm -hmm. I'm thinking about. Uh, I know some in Malaysia. I know some in the state that are very good in this. And how can we bring this team around them to ensure that they will succeed in, four, succeed in four years. And that's what we invest into, right? Uh, and the last step is we deploy the solution with the first guys, the NGOs or the governmental organization, the people that actually live in the ecosystem concerned because we wanna be sure that, uh, you know, we don't come into the jungle. If the, the example is for the Brazilian jungle, we don't come into the jungle saying to the indigenous people, hey, move aside, we're gonna show you how to do. They know better. Right. Right. And, right. The NGO, and the NGO that's there at their best interest at heart. So we, we're sure that when we deploy, we do it in a proper way with the proper knowledge. So that's, that's kind of the loop. That's what I call the living labs. Because it, it's like kind of a circle of, uh, uh, of an, um, yeah, an investment project uh, over three, four years that we, we do with a big organization that can prime the pump. Uh, uh, they, they pay for the first part of the project to put everybody together. And then we go to impact investors and say, hey, we have this story to write with this startup. We have to bring them from zero to a hero. This is what they want to do. You want to have impact. You always wonder how my money is going to convert into impact. Well, this one will be used by those guys in the forest or in the ocean. And let's write the story together. Wow, that's it's interesting. That's, that's interesting because it's, it's totally different mindset. I love the idea where you say, why pick the one instead of, doing 50, the impact is bigger if you want to achieve the goal of saving the planet. It makes a lot more sense, right? Because then you get people, a lot of people involved. The mindset starts to change. And we need a number. We don't need to find one or two or three unicorns that everybody talks about. We need right. thousands of new companies. We need to rebuild the whole ecosystem. Uh, uh, why, why am I saying company? Because we like it or not, in the world we're living it, uh, everything has to have an economical sense to last. That's the way it is, right? Uh, you might, might agree or like it or not, but that's the way it is. Uh, and I see all those NGOs really struggling in the end. I mean, it's very heavy. It's very, very yeah. hard to, to move on doing this. So that's why for me, one of the conditions was to say, well, we want to build the companies of the future. We have to build these new ecosystems. All those huge groups, most of them don't have their place, actually. They, they, their business model is not compatible with the sustainable world as we might imagine it, where we have to be more uh, uh, to reduce our consumption, reduce our impact, reduce our footprint. Uh, uh, a lot of the huge corporations we know, their inner business model is not compatible with this. So the idea right. was to say, we have to keep on working with them. And I like what, what a lot of people are trying to do on ESG and all this, but I, I decided to take a different path and, and say, okay, I want to, to breed all those little companies. We'll need thousands and thousands of companies in the future. So if you start to be very picky and I compare it to, you know, you have those uh, soccer football teams, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you have those that are really onto, um, we're going to bag the best one and spot the best one very early stage. and and. If the 49 others die, actually, we don't care because we'll never hire them, right? And you have those teams like Monaco, as a matter of fact, or Lyon in France. Uh, they are more, they're more famous for growing people. And maybe oh. we'll find this, this, this Maradona or Zidane or whatever. 
but at least we want to make sure the other ones will be international level players. And uh, that's a different way. That, that, that's really uh, what I think needs for impact and why it didn't work so far for those early stage company. It's just because we were judging them under the mm. same criteria that those money-making cash machine uh, uh, startups. Well, you work very hard to get to this level. I, I uh, you know, your passion, your passion speaks in volumes because uh, you believe, truly believe in it and you stick to what you believe in. And a lot of people might say now that where, where you got is like, wow, you know, of course it's easy. So what was the biggest struggle for you in the beginning when you wanted to start this? The biggest struggle? Well, walk away from the money because that's the <laughs> trick of corporate. <laughs> that's the trick of corporate. They, they keep you in the golden cage where you make very great salary, very good salary. So, and, 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 and the more you go and the more I get frustrated because I knew it, it was probably not the right path for what I wanted to achieve. Well, the higher is the fall, right? Because every year you take a better yeah. salary. And, uh, 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 and, and, and that's, that was for me uh, one of the big holdbacks. The second one was my education. Uh, uh, for my parents, in the, in the, my dad only worked for one company all his life. Mm -hmm. My mother was a teacher. So when you got a job, you you cling to it. And I already changed a couple of times jobs and, 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 and uh, uh, it was always a stress for them. But uh, anyway, you grew up in this. So, uh, and, and, and that's how I grew up and, and saying, okay, I'm gonna, I have to make the decision to walk away from, um, the, from all this. That was for me the biggest challenge. But what made it possible is uh, my girlfriend first. Uh, uh, she really gave me the strength in saying, hey, you know what? Everything will be fine. Let's try it. If it doesn't work, we'll find another way. And it seems stupid, but it's, it's good to hear it from somebody that loves you and, and, and somebody else, actually, than you. And uh, all my friends in Singapore, too, uh, they, they, they saw me. I was talking about oh, all this. Yeah, I want to do this. And I mean, it's dating and everybody really pushed me. So I took the energy from them. And then mm -hmm. I said, uh, okay, now let's do it. End of 2018, uh, I go. Right, right. So, so um, the other thing I want to ask you is that you travel, you went sailing for a year. Yeah. When, when, I, uh, when I left, uh, the first urgent emergency for me was to take some time. I've been working, uh, like I said, in corporate very early all my life. You know, you do high school and then you, uh, you do engineering school and then you go to corporate and, and it's never ending, right? So I said, okay. Yeah. I was always dreaming all, all those. I, I, I wish I did that when I was younger. Uh, on, before I did it, actually, I was always like, if I had done that at 20, like everybody does, it would have been great. And but in the end, I'm happy I, 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 I did not in the way where I think at 45, I mm -hmm. really appreciated it. So mm -hmm. I jumped on a boat with my, uh, my business partner who was finishing his uh, tour around the world on his uh, sailing boat. And I, I met him in, in the Caribbean. Uh, we crossed the Panama Canal and we brought the boat, the boat back up to uh, Phuket. Uh, and we're divers, so we took our time and we, we dove in Galapagos, all the islands, crazy islands you, you, you can imagine. And, and, and that's where I, I, you have time on the boat, right? <laughs> so that's where I, I plan all this. The Living Lab was designed on the boat. Uh, uh, so I, oh. I was like, okay. So it was not like I prepared the next step and then I quit. No, I, I, at the point in time, I, I thought, what I knew is that I didn't want to continue that way. And, and that was the, the, when I said, okay, I quit. And I was like, okay, so what I do now? <laughs> right. And uh, right. That, that's what, uh, but that's who I am. I need to be like full, one a good person in one thing. I could not, you know, doing both, you know, you keep on doing your corporate and then you think already of what you're going to do. And you, you uh, no, I, I, I wanted to say, okay, I, I, I need to take a risk. It's like paragliding, all the sports I do, right? There's this moment where you calculate everything before and then you have to jump, right? You have to do it. <laughs> yeah. And that's the way I did it. But, uh, so you all, decided... sorry, so, uh, sorry. Oh. You're also working with uh, the Singapore, Singapore government. Am I, am I correct to say? Yeah, yeah. I'm co so uh, yeah, well, um, just when I quit, I, I uh, acquired a, a company with some friends and uh, we're working with uh, EDB and uh, as part of this company. So basically what we do, we help technology come from uh, the Western world into Asia. And, and we focus uh, on uh, tech for good, right? Uh, and the Living Lab is like, uh, uh, 
this is this project where we take that way bigger and, and make it a, a, an impact and an investment project to uh, to grow multiple companies. Uh, and uh, as of such, we we yeah we work with the Singaporean government, uh, and uh, I they know what I'm doing. Uh, on the living labs and uh, yeah. I'm involved with them and I, I take on my projects and we try to see if we can, uh, uh, how we can, how we can work on this. I, I'm focusing basically on living labs for now on, on three big topics, what I call the two lungs of the planet, the, uh, okay. uh, the, the, the rainforest and the oceans. And uh, what I do call the cancer of the planet, <laughs> mm. which is the urban life, which is the way of living, all the, everything related to consumerism and everything. And uh, so obviously the rainforest, I started with working with those people in Brazil, so it's more focused there. Uh, on the oceans, uh, my, uh, my partner um, is located in Mauritius. And so we're working, we're trying to uh, work in Seychelles and Mauritius on, on the ocean part. And Singapore is for the last one, that's where I live. And what I love about Singapore is that you have all the issues of a country in the size of a city. Uh, with a very fast past mind, which is totally compatible with what I said earlier on to trying and startups and everything. So everything is there. And uh, yeah, so we, we're trying to, to, to put projects here and I'm already helping some startups to grow. But uh, the, what I'm working on with the EDB is trying to, to have a, 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 I would say a more packaged project to say, hey, let's try to find and, and boost and, and 10 startups really bringing solutions to sustainability. And I'm also involved with a, in a group with Temasek and other mm. organizations. Great. It, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a great, you discover that in sustainability, it's, it, it's a small world, yeah. uh, but there are more and more people. And uh, what I love in impact, when I came back from, my, 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 uh, from the boat, you know, I had to put uh, my ID to challenge to, er to everyone. So what, what I found out is all the positiveness. That's, that's what drives you. Because you're, 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 you're on a beautiful topic, you know. And, and when you talk with people, I see immediately uh, when I explain the, what I want to do and where I come from, I, I, I see what it puts in their eyes. And there's always a goodwill. And everybody I met, I met probably over 100 people here that know about my project and actually know about it and follow me and uh, a bit less than that in America. Uh, but at minimum, everybody, they might not, not have money or they might not have time, but they're going to help me. They're going to connect me with someone. They're going to, mm. they, you know, and, and that's, that was the, the revolution from when I quit corporate where, where it's like money and it's a hardcore uh, world, right? I mean, you make your colleagues and can be friends or whatever, but still, when you're on, on those topics, there's such a goodwill from everyone. It's, it's really, uh, yeah, it's a gasoline, actually. It really pushes you. Yeah. Uh, that's what I like. And, and, and even, even when you talk with the government, because uh, you talk with people in the end, right? Yes. And, and, and it resonates to them. And you wouldn't imagine all the people I meet that are in corporate or companies that you're not very proud of but they got to feed the children. And they're in this hamster wheel I'm talking about. And it's right. all about what can you do to get out of it. And it's not that hard. Uh, and obviously, it depends on your own situation. Uh, I don't have kids. So I totally understand the people that tell me I have three kids to feed. Uh, I live in Singapore. It's very expensive. I, this I totally understand. But find your thing. Find, mm -hmm. find, find the thing you can do. And there's like so many things you can do. You can be just spending, a, I don't know, part of your time supporting an NGO or doing things. I mean, there's always, you, you have to find this niche. Right. And it's so rewarding that you will not regret it. And maybe it will give you the strength to, to do more. Actually. But it's interesting because you say, you know, you don't have any kids. But if I were to look in a different perspective, people that have kids are supposed to care more because we are living our generation, our, you know, uh, offsprings, right? So for yeah. me to look at you and go like, why do you care? You don't have kids, you know, who cares, right? But that That's has right. to be your, <laughs> your level. It, yeah. But, but for your, your passion and your, your, your love, to me, it's greater because it's out on the, the purity of really caring about the planet and how we live. Um, and there's no selfishness to it. You know, I mean, your selfishness I mean, is like... You, it's funny because when I describe it, I feel there is because 
in the end, it's so fulfilling for me that I feel, well, I'm yeah. selfish. I'm happy with, with what I'm giving. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I right. wanted more. Uh, I, I think on, on, the, on the kids' part, obviously, I cannot judge because I, I don't have any, but still, my, my brothers, I have nephews and, and nieces. But uh, I would say that the, the, I agree with you, and a lot of people tell me this, and I, I got to do something because I need in 10 years to be able to watch my kids in the eyes, and, and they're going to ask me, what did you do, and, and why didn't you do anything? So on that, on that end, it's, it's, a, it's a motivation, obviously. Uh, uh, but it's it, 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 life is tough. I mean, economic life is super tough, and, and paying for your kids and making sure they have a good fut future. That's we're going back to what you said earlier. Our generation is all about work hard, right? Mm. And if you don't, you're gonna lose it, and then your kids are gonna lose it with you. And that's kind of the thing you have to. Uh, it, it's hard to to yeah to. I understand the, the, the toughness of making the step, right? Right. And uh, so some people can. Uh, depending where you are, uh, depending where you live. Uh, uh, obviously, in Singapore, I understand which it's hard to do. Everything is expensive, and uh, I understand mm. that. But still, it doesn't mean you you have to do like me, throw everything away and move because you have a beautiful girlfriend that's going to tell you, "Hey, I support you no matter what." Uh, uh, but you can find your own. You can you you can find your own uh, your own path. So let's talk about the, the Brazil. So there's three parts to this. First is the Brazil yeah. part, and, and second is uh, the Maldives, and then the third is Singapore, right? So let's talk about the Brazil part. What do you aim to achieve? So with them, the project uh, uh, we have there, it, it's all the, always the same basis. Uh, uh, develop startups that bring solutions and uh, to uh, a sustainability issues. So in the case of the rainforest, the idea is, uh, I work, uh, I'm in contact with uh, three main NGOs and a huge uh, uh, federation called IUCN, which is uh, um, something from the United Nations. Okay. Uh, those NGOs have all this similar project in the jungle, which is how do you, pro how do you protect it from fires, pro poaching, illegal mining from destruction, basically. Uh, how do we better value the forest, meaning how can we make agriculture of a local economy without having to cut the forest? Well, there's, there's a lot in there. Uh, and it's been proven that the indi indigenous people are the best people to protect the forest. It's been proven. When you look at, uh, I could show you maps, when you look in Brazil, all the, the, the places where you have the most forest are reservations. It works. They protect it. However, we know that when you're in a reservation, you're a bit, uh, um, you're, you're passive, right? You're in defense, in defense mode. And somebody, and it did in the, in the traits of the current president, uh, may come as an aggression. Uh, and so they have project on health, improve the health of the ind indigenous people. They have project mm -hmm. on preserving their culture. Uh, uh, all those projects, when you look at them, they, they're really struggling on the ground because they're NG, NGOs. They don't have much means and everything. And mm. me, with my eyes and, and my background, I see it. There's a lot of innovations and technology that could help them. When I'm saying technology or innovations, I'm not talking about uh, only robots and deep tech. And on the contrary, you have sometimes low tech that you can bring in. Let me give you an example. Um, Looking at all, the, all, all their projects, uh, um, they have one thing in common, they needed a way uh, uh, to ensure transportation, either to bring the people or to bring uh, goods. When you want to create a local economy, they live in the middle of the jungle. Well, just uh, one of the reservations I'm working with is uh, 250 times larger than Singapore with 10,000 people in it. So you can imagine mm -hmm. there are 6 million here, 250 times the size of this, only 10,000 people. So you need a way of transportation. Mm. Um, through my network, I found this guy in Ecuador, same forest, same Amazon forest, different country, that, that has uh, the design, a solar boat made for indigenous people. And it was a philanthropy, a beautiful boat, solar, sustainable, and uh, to bring people around uh, uh, and, mm. and, and be able to, uh, for the, the most remote tribe to be, uh, to be reached. When I look at this boat, as a philanthropy, uh, immediately the image I had, I thought about the long tails we have in Thailand. Right. You know, those boats with a, yes. a, a, a track engine and a long and a long shaft, and it's really polluting. And 
And Thailand is working a lot in trying to convert progressively the chocolate boats and everything. I also had the image when I was in Polynesia with the boat, with my boat, uh, all those five stars hotel that are eco lodge on the bar on the on the reef and everything and beautiful lagoons, but still bring people and 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 freight and trash through thermal boats, uh, regular boats that are polluting. And when I saw his boat, I was like, well. We have a commercial application here. We have a problem. We need to do this. We need to change them. Uh, he's got a solution. Uh, well, if I can find uh, uh, here, we, we can work on to being able to manufacture manufacture the boat here, improve it, reduce its cost. Then we can sell it. The boats will be more reliable and cheaper. The um, Oliver in Ecuador can pursue his philanthropic action because he'll have a right. better boat and cheaper. And uh, the investors we find to bring money, put money on this and make that happen, well, they know they have impact, but they're gonna help people in the forest. They're gonna replace polluting boats in Thailand and, and uh, also in Polynesia. And we have a business model that works. And in the end, in a few words, you see how I connected Brazil, Ecuador, uh, me in Singapore, Thailand, Polynesia, and investors that are, will probably be in, in, in US and Europe. And that's exactly the vision I wanted to bring. For me, this was so easy when I was in corporate. We had projects right. with multiple nationalities. But for those people, even the first two ones working in the rainforest, trying to help in the way people didn't know about each other. And one had the solution that the other one could use. So that's exactly illustrating the Living Labs, trying to, to, to put this and, right. and create this project that, uh, that, that give the poor a global to local. So in the forest, that's what we're trying to do. So looking at uh, uh, depending on the projects that those NGOs have, technology for uh, uh, farming, technologies for uh, transportation, technology for telemedicine, working with uh, one solution I found into, uh, in, Brazil, in, uh, in Australia. They did develop a telemedicine uh, solution when you have a, boot, uh, a bad uh, network, uh, you, can do, you can have a doctor and they use it for the uh, aboriginal people. Uh, we could use this technology, bring it in Brazil. Uh, I was also looking at, uh, um, we have to make this economy. I d we don't want to spoil them with dollars, right? <laughs> because right. otherwise we're reproducing all the mistakes we've done elsewhere. So I was trying to look at what are the alternative economies that are present and solutions are in, in the world to be able to set up an economy without uh, keeping the culture, uh, uh, you know, respecting mm. the culture. And I found uh, um, a Mubarak in, in Ghana uh, that's doing this is 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 just digitalizing on a, a simple phone uh, what we call the tontine, which is those collecting sa collective savings. So in the village, you have everybody that will put a dollar in the box every day, and at the end of the month, well, you can have part of uh, almost all your money back. So they saved it for you. And it's like we think saving is you know you put money, you put one hundred, you take one hundred and ten because you have interest. No. For them, they put 100, they take only 90 because they actually save the money from stealing or for their own <laughs> consumption. So that's called, called collective savings. But the good things also they do, if one of the family has a problem during the month, then you have a pool of money where you can help and loan the money to them. And I really love this approach. So it's just di digitalizing this so they can do it with a phone so they can save more money and it gave them like a, a credit score so you can start to introduce individual loans and everything, but while respecting this culture. So I found those guys in Ghana and that could be something we can transpose in Brazil. Uh, I have another example if you're in Pakistan because I really love her, uh, Fariel. She was working in a big energy company and, 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 and was going into the, the, the countryside and she found all those farmers that, that are struggling. They're not bankerized. Uh, they are far from uh, from uh, cities and everything, and she wanted to equip them into sustainable equipment like a solar pump to pump water instead of mm -hmm. all them uh, uh, manual wells and everything, uh, power generators, not thermal but solar or alternative options. Uh, but they don't have any money. How would they buy that, right? So mm -hmm. what she ended up doing is that they pay her with goats. They have goats. <laughs> right. They pay with goats. So she ended up doing this virtual marketplace where the farmers uh, 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 trade goats against sustainable equipment. And, uh, and that's great. And, and, and all the possibilities it opened are, are endless because 
doing this before when they wanted to have a little bit more money to buy something, they had to bring the goat eight kilometers away. And depending on who they will find to buy the goat, they may be get ripped off or, and then you have a lot of intermediaries. So now with our marketplace, it kind of, there's like a market price for a goat and a fair price for everybody in the region, you know? And so it's what I was saying on two, you know, like the, 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 the consequences of your mistake are nothing compared to the doors you can open when you succeed. It, it was exactly, it, it all started because she wanted to be able to give them uh, water pumps and two goats instead to be paid. And uh, I, I actually, at uh, the beginning, the, the company was called Goats for Water. And, uh, but then it applied to, it went so big and it applied to so many different things that now it's called Uptrade. And uh, so I found uh, uh, in Pakistan through a network I have in America, and uh, I helped her uh, uh, raise money. Uh, actually, I, 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 I did a competition like a Shark Tank, you know, where you have a lot of uh, investors looking at it and discussing. And uh, the gym, the guy organizing this Shark Tank at the beginning, was very surprised. And I thought, well, I'm going to bring you a Ghana company and a Pakistanis company. They trade goats for equipment. It was like, what? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we did it. Uh, uh, we prepped them. Uh, and they nailed it at the competition. It was the first time that two companies presented the same day, raised interest of all the investors. So wow. they are in negotiation right now to raise funds. So it works. And those investors are, one is in America, one is in Malaysia, one is in Singapore. You know, the power of global bring to those local initiatives. And, and yeah. we held them. No, but, but I think the way you, you think of uh, what you said is very impactful. You know, you don't want to change the culture. You just think a different way because most of the time you go like, you know, I don't want it to be like uh, money. You know, of course, money is important. It pays the bill, but respecting the culture because we see how in our own way that we live in, especially in developed country in Singapore, money is the trade of everything, right? But not change, I mean, not changing their culture and just making it possible to help them and and I, I love that. I think you're doing a tremendous job uh, with your, your team that you reach out because it, it goes into a lot of thinking also, right? I mean, you, have, you put a lot of thought in it. It's very, yeah, it's very complicated because obviously uh, uh, money is the easy solution, right? And, but it's a short-term solution. And when you start to looking at us, we're, we're really thinking in Brazil right now, the work on to trying to create this you have to create a new micro ecosystem, right? And, and, and being able for people to trade, the fishermen will trade with the, uh, the producer of vegetables. And we're trying to say, what can we put in place that minimize the exchange of currency? Mm. And uh, we get back to banter and trading, which what they're used to. Mm. Uh, in, the, in the society we're living, it's super complicated in the end because you always, it's kind of a Mikado game, right? <laughs> you, you try yeah. to pull this, oh, I'm going to fix that. And then <laughs> something else crumbled because the guy was depending on that one. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a long route, uh, but that's also why I want to focus on early stage and local problem, problems, you know, sizable. And, yes. uh, and, and we can try small because now we have the technology when we find something, you can replicate all over the place, all over the world. And you will customize it to, to the local culture or whatever. But, uh, working with um, uh, uh, a girl here, Matilda, that's uh, uh, working on a, on a machine to transfer to transform plastic into oil uh, to oh. clean the islands in Indonesia. And uh, uh, the solution she's implementing there, and she has a different approach where she wanted to be very simple for people to be able to use it there. Well, if it works, I can bring it into the Indian Ocean. I can bring it into the Polynesia. You can bring it uh, so. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You, you do it small, make it work there, and then we replicate. And, and we have the global outreach now. There's internet, there's everything. It's information and sharing of knowledge. It's, it's nothing, right? It's, it, yeah. It's, it's, well, it's incredible. Like, um, uh, we've got like a few more minutes. I just want to ask you, I mean, spirit-wise, you've really answered whatever you're doing because, you know, for me, it's like, it's very spiritual what you're doing, um, caring beyond your, or yourself, but not just for your fellow uh, human beings, but for the planet. I think that's an incredible, incredible trait well, funny, to have. You asked me the question before, uh, what's your reflection on, on, on spirituality? <laughs> spirituality. Oh, I'm not a spiritual guy at all. <laughs> but you are. But you are. I, I mean, a lot of people... 
Even, but a lot of people think spirituality has got to do with religion, but I think it's got to do beyond yourself. It's got nothing to do with religion. Some, some do have that, but I think what you're doing is incredible. It's, it goes beyond religion. It's caring outside of yourself. Um, you know, I think I salute you for that. Um, the other okay. one, the, the other thing that I want to ask you is like, it's a lot of thinking to think, like you said, you know, you, you think you solve this and something pops out and you got to solve this. What do you do for your, uh, to keep your mind calm for uh, the fitness of your mind? I mean, your body, I know you exercise, spirituality, you know, you, uh, for spirituality, fitness, you do a lot of things for sustainability and companies and helping the rest. But what do you do for your mind? So before COVID, <laughs> it was extreme sports, uh, kite surfing, uh, 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 free riding and, and scuba diving. In those moments where right. I'm focused on to, uh, what you have to execute, uh, to execute and uh, it really empties my mind. And, and that's re oh. I, I, what I really needed to, to flush out. And COVID was a challenge for that, right? Obviously, couldn't do all this. Uh, so I picked up running and, uh, uh, and, and what actually I always hated running. I always hated sports where you suffer because uh, I, I was asthmatic <laughs> I and my dad was uh, a champion in biking and he pushed me too hard at the beginning and kind of, uh, you know, it, it, it was tough for me. That's why I went on to the, all those sports where you, you use nature more than your strength. Right? Right. And uh, um, so in COVID, uh, uh, the problem with running was this, and my head doesn't stop and everything. And, you speak. and so what I ended up discovering is those podcasts. So I, I, I listened to, I had to make all my education on sustainability when I said I go through student beers. And so I listened to uh, people explaining and talking. And, and so I just focus on this and I run. So uh, wow. that's how I managed through COVID to offset that, to offset my, my need to flush the brains from time to time. So I do that every morning and uh, a bit of gym. And uh, I know I, my friends, uh, I, I go play golf a bit. <laughs> right. It's not great ability at all but that's kind of the only thing we can do here right now so right <laughs> so what advice do you have for people i mean i know uh, um what you're doing for for this company the new co company that you're doing what advice do you give people that are looking for the balance or the answer of finding fitness in mind body spirit uh be true to yourself that, that's the only thing, I mean, it, it sounds like stupid to say it like this, but there's like, I, I'm going to say what works for me and people can, uh, can, yes. can, 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 can look at it a lot. I, I, I don't uh, pretend to be able to give advice. Uh, uh, what works for me is that I never know what I want. And I feel it's the hardest thing to know what you want. But I, the more I get old, the more I'm sure about what I don't want. And when I don't want something, I just... Uh, express it. Be being a, a problem in a relationship or being, life has to be simple. And I'm, 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 I select the people, surround you by the people that make you happy today, instead of trying to endure people because you think they might make you happy tomorrow. Uh, surround yourself with people that you enjoy right now, uh, uh, have fun. So that's about the surrounding and about what you can do uh, and the actions. Uh, well, if you're doing the first one, opportunities will arise. And you'll meet different people that you're not used to. Uh, and uh, you'll see, uh, uh, yeah, get out. Try something different. I went and I, and, and I talked to the millennials, and that's how I discovered them. And I was like you before, you know, they're just on their social media that I don't understand and everything. But no, it's not at all. When I, when I put myself out there, I, I find it out. So, yeah. Great. Know what you don't want. Don't tolerate anything that you don't want. And surround, about, surround yourself with people that actually make you happy today. Don't, don't drag people that are... Uh, liability because you think yeah it's part of it i have to do it it's social I, i'm not a political anymore i'm not uh, I, I, that's that's what works for me and uh, I, I think those are great advice i think i think that's uh, you you truly uh walk the talk you know um so it's 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 incredible i wish you all the best and in anything that i can i can assist you know uh, you know i'm there for you um, well, people like you actually gave me a lot of strengths. We, we met uh, months <laughs> ago and your energy and the, your, the, what, you, what you see in life really uh, 
Uh, you were part of the the ones that gave me the strength to keep on going and, and move. So thank well, you. Well, we so need people. We need people like you to to help us because you know um, most of us are really messed up anyway. So, <laughs> including me, believe me. No. no. Uh <laughs>